Hello, what is up? My name is Vincent and I'm super excited to be here with you today. So I am a classic Yu-Gi-Oh player. I've not played with any of the new cards. I've only played with the old cards and uh, I've only played casually, you know, uh, these last couple of weeks, uh, maybe this last year, and just, you know, sporadically with my friends. I have not played uh, in the current meta, tournaments, nothing like that. Um, and I have not seen really any of the new cards. The newest cards I've seen was like the original Elemental Heroes, like from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Uh, so that dates things. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that, you know, that gives you a good idea. Anyways, um, I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! like a lot, and um, my dad told me I'm probably one of the only people that uh, I would ever meet that has had their father uh, pay someone that was a professional card game player to teach them how to play at a professional level So I love card games. I was raised on them and I even had a pro tutor uh, Teach me the ways of how to play card games. But anyways uh, today we're diving into the saga of blue eyes white dragon and the uh, Sacred beast structure decks now. I contemplated on doing this video or not uh, for a few reasons one is I know that these aren't brand new and so you might be wondering well why should I be here if you know I can watch these uh, unboxings on other channels but I felt like it'd be cool uh, to see it from the perspective of someone who has no idea what's in these boxes and what new cards look like now I am aware like I've seen you know of course I've seen some new cards in passing so like I know that they have like tons of text and you need a magnifying glass to read some of the cards and I, I'm aware of things like that but as far as like knowing like how exactly the cards play like I feel like there's probably a lot of search cards you know be able to search your deck for blue eyes and special summon blue eyes because of this and that like I like I foresee a lot of that anyways I picked up these two decks um, the Saga of Blue Eyes I found in a Walgreens I got lost and I was in this very sketchy part of town had no idea where to go did not have my GPS turned on and I was like I need to pull over turn on you know my GPS figure out where I'm at and you know figure things out well I pulled into a Walgreens, I was like, maybe they have Yu-Gi-Oh! This is the only thing they had. And I looked it up, it said it released in 2013, so I was like, oh, it's pretty old then. But now I'm thinking, this is probably re-released, you know? Because it's not first edition, and it says 2020 at the bottom, which I realized later. So, I guess they re-release, like, they re-release these, like, every year? I don't know, so tell me in the comments, like, is this, so this came out in 2013, and then they just now re-released it in 2020? Or, what's going on with this? Because I have no idea. Uh, as far as the Sacred Beast, I found online for $10. It seems like that's pretty cheap for these. Um, I feel like they come out at around $10 whenever they first release. But since this one's a little bit older and it seems fairly popular, I think I've uh, seen people say that this one's one of the better structure decks for Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, so yeah, uh, there's that. So I, I felt like I'd, pulled, I'd, I'd get this and it has the Egyptian Gods, which I remember. So it seems like a good uh, kind of in-between. Um, so let's open the Saga Blue Eyes because I did technically pick this one up first. So um, I I will open this one first. Now, I I guess opening from the top makes more sense. I I do want to kind of keep the structure decks a little bit intact because I do plan on um, probably just playing these structure decks as is. Um, I know the ideal thing you know I've heard is to buy three. Uh, that way you have three copies, you know, a full play set of cards, and then you can use them that way. Uh, the thing is, is, uh, I don't know, like, since I'm playing casually, I think having one set is fine with me for now. So, that's what I'm doing for now, and we'll see. I need to pull up my chair some. So, this is actually the first structure deck I think I've opened since the original Yugi and Kaiba structure decks, which I had a ton of. Like, my dad used to own a card shop, and, um, we had, like, at least you know 50 of each and man if we had held on to those that would have been awesome but yeah so we have uh, Yugi here and this dude who uh, I don't know who he is and I don't know what that is now this is a blue eyes white dragon and I've seen this before and I think this was like this art was used in a 10 promo from back in the day um, but this or no, no no wait it was from like a Shonen Jump magazine that's what it was um, and I think I have this uh, somewhere uh, of course, comes with a mat, which I won't. I won't really bore you guys with because I know that you probably see what that looks. You've seen what that looks like. Um, and then this is, I guess, how to play the deck. So that seems fairly handy. Now I'm curious. Um, for those watching, do these actually help? Like, if I were to read this, would this actually help me a lot on how to play this deck? Um, like, does it? 
cover things pretty well or or not. I'm actually curious. Um, I'm gonna kind of open this off off the top down camera real quick because um, I'll probably have an easier time. I say that as I struggle with opening it. Um, well, my one true weakness: uh, opening things on camera. I uh, I should have grabbed some scissors probably, but you know. You live and you learn, or you're like me and you don't actually learn because you've opened things on camera multiple times and, uh, you know, routinely get stuck, but, you know, we'll see. This is actually pretty exciting because even though I know Blue Eyes, um, Blue Eyes wasn't really that playable back when I played. Um, he would just die so easily to other things. Like, he was the most powerful normal summon monster, but um, just people wouldn't run him. But that's a beautiful card, and um, I'm happy to be able to run it in this Blue Eyes deck. Um, and, and of course, I know these these decks aren't meta, um, but I'm sure that they're pretty fun casually. Uh, then we have the Azure Eye Silver Dragon. Oh my god, so I am really not gonna know what's going on. I'm just not realizing how bad of an idea this video was. So I'm gonna have to pull him off here real quick. Uh, one tuner, tu tuner, tuner, uh, <laughs> why, why do I struggle with that word? Oh my god. Okay, when this card is special summon, uh, dragon type monsters you currently control cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects until the end of your next turn. Huh. Once per turn, during your standby phase, you can target one mo normal monster in your graveyard special summon it. Okay, so, I'm assuming he's meant to special summon blue eyes, and I wonder how easy it is to bring him out on someone else's turn for that effect. Uh, it's probably not what he's meant for, but it, something that came to mind. We have uh, Maiden with Eyes of Blue. Um, so she she's pretty cool. Uh, you know, she has like the blue eyes, uh, white dragon aesthetic, but as a female. And uh, yeah, that's a, there's a lot there. But I'm assuming she's a really good card. Uh, when this card is targeted for an attack, you can negate the attack, and if you do, change the battle position of this card. Then you can special summon one Blue Eyes White Dragon from your hand deck or graveyard during e uh, either player's turn when a card or effect is activated that targets this face-up card. Uh, you can special summon one Blue Eyes White Dragon from your hand deck or graveyard. You can only use one Maiden with Eyes of Blue uh, effect once per turn uh, and once that turn. So, she seems really good in the deck. She seems like one of the cards that you'd probably want to buy three of the structure decks for if you're trying to like amp this up to be as good as possible. And we have Dragon Shrine, send one dragon type monster from your deck to the graveyard. And then um, if that monster is in, in your graveyard is a dragon type monster, you can send one more dragon monster from your deck to the graveyard. You can only activate this one. So, you know, I feel like Yu-Gi-Oh! now is very much trying to know your deck's strategy and then play accordingly. Uh, this card, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, say, kind of sucks. Um, like, like I'm returning to Yu-Gi-Oh, um, so maybe the, I, I feel like this card probably works fine in the structure deck. It won't be blurry, but just being a normal monster that's weaker than Blue Eyes. Uh, now it has really good defense, but usually that that stuff doesn't really matter. Like for example, this guy has 2,000 attack, 100 defense. I feel like even though his def defense is low, because he's a um, four-star monster, he's a lot better. Um, now I do, I am pretty aware that this guy probably still doesn't hold a candle to current, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh's and that, and that card still isn't good even though by, you know, my, my standards, like, you know, people used to pay like $20 for Gemini Elf and this guy, like if this guy was out at the same time as Gemini Elf, then, uh, they would both be played in beatdown decks, but Gemini Elf definitely wouldn't be worth as much as he would have been. Uh, then we have Luster Dragon, which is, uh... I remember he was played a lot in beatdown decks. He's really cool, so it's cool to have a throwback there. We have Flameveil Guard, which is uh, meant for being a tuner monster, because uh, he has a one star there, 1,000 or 100 attack, 2,000 defense. Um, tuner, I, I don't think tuner involves the stars. Um, I don't know much about the, the new special summoning, but yeah, I think that I think all you need is. Well, actually, I think it does matter with stars. You just need him, and then like another one, and then as long as their stars combine to equal or greater, or is it just equal? I'm not sure. Um, I'm sure you know, so you can let me know. <laughs> uh, Darkstorm Dragon. Now, this guy looks really cool, actually. Um, this card is treated as a normal monster while face up on the field or in the graveyard. That seems like that's pretty beneficial. 
Uh, while this card is face up on the field, you can normal summon it to have it become an effect monster with this effect. Once per turn, you can send a one face up spell or trap card. You control the graveyard, destroy it to basically heavy storm. So this guy actually seems uh, pretty solid. Like as far as this deck goes, he seems like a solid card. Um, Mirage Dragon I actually used to play in my Chaos deck uh, back in the day. Um, he stops um, trap cards from activating during the battle phase, which can be very helpful. So, especially at the time Sakuritsu armor came out, I think maybe even in the same set, or close to the same set, and Sakuritsu armor would destroy your attacking monster, so having a Mirage Dragon would help prevent that. Also, people would use the Evacuation Compulsory during the battle phase, and so the Mirage Dragon would help get around that too. Even though technically they could activate it before, a lot of people would want to wait to the battle phase to activate it. Then we have Divine Dragon, Apocryphal, ap apoc apocalypse. I don't know. I I have a speech impediment, and it is really showing when I'm trying to pronounce these Yu-Gi-Oh terms. Uh, once per turn, you can discard one card, then target one dragon type monster in your graveyard. Add that card to your hand. Uh, that seems solid. Um, I'm questioning why he looks like he's made of fire and he's a dark type, but that's okay. The White Stone of Legend. When this card is sent to the graveyard, add one blue eyes uh, from your deck to your hand. Um, this card seems okay. It helps that it's a tuner, I'm sure. Uh, Kaiba Man, uh, you can tribute this, uh, special summon one blue eyes dragon from your hand. Uh, pretty cool. Um, I actually have the, like, super rare version of him. Uh, Herald of Creation. Um, once per turn, you can discard one card, then target one level seven or higher monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Uh, that seems pretty cool. Uh, 1800 attacks, pretty nice. Um, at least back then it was, so we'll, you know, we'll see. Uh, we had the Kaiser Seahorse, which counts as two tribute monsters. Now, if this did come out in 2013, it makes sense that I recognize some of these cards, because some of these cards came out, you know, 2007, 2008, so, you know, they would still be a little bit more relevant at this point. Uh, Honest, which is a cool name. Uh, it's a fairy, 1900 defense, which is pretty solid. During your main phase, you can, uh, return this card from the field to your hand during either player's damage step when a light monster you control battles you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard that monster gains attack equal to the attack of the opponent's monsters battling into the end phase that seems like a solid like combat trick then we have shining angels to pull out some of your other cards so you can use the shining angels to pull out um honest or um kaiba man would be a good choice and then you also have the uh maiden with blue eyes the eyes of blue which is probably your your top choice uh, in most cases. Then we have uh, our spell and trap cards. We have Burst Stream of Destruction. If you control a Blue Eyes White Dragon, destroy all monsters your opponent controls. Blue Eyes White Dragon cannot attack the turn. So that's really cool. It's basically a, a regeke for Blue Eyes. Uh, Stamping Destruction is a card that I actually own. Uh, if you control a dragon, you get to Mystic Space Typhoon and deal 500 damage. Wing Beat of a Giant Dragon, uh, I believe, is a uh, Heavy Storm, uh, but you have, to you have to bounce back a a dragon uh, to your hand of a higher level. Uh, discard one level eight monster, draw two cards. Um, huh. I'm curious how, how good this card is. It seems, seems like this card's pretty good in the deck because it, there's a lot of recursion. You can benefit from your high level monsters being in your graveyard, so it seems like that's fine. Uh, cards of uh, consonants, uh, discard one dragon type tuner monster with 1,000 or less attack, draw two cards. Interesting, okay. So, uh, it seems like we have a few of those, so we have a way to activate that. Uh, White Elephant's Gift. Send one face up, non effect monster you control to the graveyard, draw two cards. There's a lot of ways to draw two cards in this deck. Uh, send one monster from your hand to the graveyard. Special summon one level one monster from your hand or deck. One for one. Monster Reborn. This card has to be banned, right? Was this card ever not banned? Like, why is this card in the structure deck? Like, I get. Like, if this card's not banned, then yeah, it should be here. But. I feel like this card's banned. I feel like it's always been banned, but I, I don't know. Dragonic Tactics. Uh, tribute two Dragon-type monsters. Special summon one level eight Dragon-type monster from your deck. Uh, that's cool. I think that's pretty cool. Um, it'd be nice if you... Well, no, nah, that's cool. Okay, sure. Uh, Soul Exchange. Uh, classic card. I love it. The artwork on it is just so nostalgic, but I love it. it it's so cool. Enemy Controller. I love this card. I'd run this card. Uh, I think I traded this card right before I quit playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, I missed it. So I'm happy to have it, even though this is no longer the super rare, ultra rare one I had. Uh, Fiendish Chain. Activate this card by targeting one effect monster on the field. 
Uh, the effects of it are negated. Also cannot attack. When it is destroyed, destroy this card. Um, this card actually seems pretty pretty good. Um, but I don't know. Kunai with Chain. Uh, good old Joy Wheeler's card. Activate one or both of these effects simultaneously. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, target the attacking monster, change it to defense position, and you can also target a monster you control and equip it with this card and it gains 500 attack. That's cool. Um, I don't remember if I've actually seen that card before. Uh, damage Condenser. When you take battle damage, discard one card. Special summon one monster from your hand with attack less than or equal to the battle damage you uh, took and face up attack. Interesting. Okay. Um... Okay, so it's not as good as I, as I thought. Because I thought for a second it negated the attack, like a magic cylinder, but instead of redirecting it, you get the special summon something. Because I was about to say, that seems really good. Um, this seems okay, but I imagine this would probably be one of the cards you would get rid of uh, if you were to you know, try to upgrade this deck. Uh, Call of the Haunted. Uh, super. This is one. This is one of my all-time favorite Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Uh, I think it sounds cool, looks cool. It's it's great thematically. Uh, compulsory evacuation device. Super cool card. Champions vigilance. If you control a level seven or higher normal monster, when a uh, monster would be summoned or a spell or trap is activated, negate the summon or activation. If you do destroy that card. Hmm. Okay. Pretty cool. Uh, Rider of the storm winds. Um, so we, so we have some other monsters here. That's interesting. Okay. Um, you can target a dragon normal monster you control, equip this monster from your hand side of the field. Uh, if a monster equipped with this card attacks a defense position mo Okay, so it inflicts piercing damage. Um, so I do know what piercing damage is. It's basically the spear dragon effect. Uh, if a monster equipped with this card would be destroyed, destroy this card instead. Okay, so so they released some cards that were like union monsters uh, back back when I played, and it reminds me of that. Uh, Kaiser Glider. Uh, this card cannot be destroyed by battle uh, with a monster the same attack. When this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, target one monster in the field, return that to uh, the hand. Um, I barely remember this guy. I don't think he saw much play when I when I played, so I question how good he is uh, in this. But there's a lot of ways to bring out higher level dragons and stuff, but I... I assume you could probably replace him uh, with something <laughs> better. Uh, Heretic Dragon of Typhonaut. Uh, if your opponent controls a monster and you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. Wait. Okay, is that like Cyber Dragon's effect? With the same stats? Uh, this card cannot attack during the turn. It is special summon this way. When this card is tributed, special summon one Dragon type normal monster from your hand deck or graveyard who is attack and defense. Wait, hold on. Also make its attack and defense zero. Oh, okay. Um, huh. So he's kind of like Cyber Dragon, but kind of not. <laughs> Silver's Cry. Uh, target one Dragon type normal monster in your graveyard. Special summon that monster. You can only activate one Silver Cry a turn. Uh, good way to get out blue eyes. Swords of Revealing Light. A classic and awesome card. And Casting of Dragon Souls. That sounds pretty cool. I'm surprised it's not a field spell. But once per turn, you can banish one Dragon type monster from your graveyard. Then target one monster you control. It gains 700 attack into the end phase of the turn, um, and then, let's see, when this card's face up on the field, it's in the graveyard, you can target one of your banished dragon type monsters, special summon the target, can only uh, control one castle of souls. And then we have the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links cards here. So may okay, so, well, this is reprinted, because I was going to say, with the original, if this was printed in 2013, like, how they have this Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, but, okay. Uh, so yeah, I think it's a, a reprinted thing, but let me know. Um, I think this seems like a really fun deck. Uh, definitely does not seem competitive. It seems... It's... I feel... I, I honestly think that my old school competitive decks would be able to beat this deck. Uh, which is fine. I think that's actually probably a good sign uh, for the health of this game. Um, because if they're, if they're like basic structure decks, which are like known to like not be able to hold a candle in the competitive scene, um, just completely stomped out and destroyed my competitive deck, then I'd be a bit worried. Um, but, um, I do think my, my older decks could actually beat that deck overall. I think that it could put up a challenge and have a chance at winning, but I do think it would win. But if you'd like to see that, uh, as a video or on stream... Uh, let me know. Uh, we do have a Twitch channel. We do uh, group uh, Twitch streams. Um, me and my friends. Uh, we played Yu-Gi-Oh! last night, actually. Uh, we did a Yu-Gi-Oh! draft. It was a ton of fun. Uh, some of my friends uh, are just now getting into Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, I'm kind of, like, you know, pushing them into it. And some of them have already been into Yu-Gi-Oh! 
Um, so definitely check that out. Uh, give us a follow over on Twitch. Uh, be sure to go ahead and like uh, this video while you're at it because uh, it helps me out in the algorithm, all that good stuff. And uh, it looks like the playmats are themed uh, as well to the structure deck, which is really nice. So this one would be an actual, um, let's see, we got an actual like Egyptian god themed playmat, which is pretty cool. We got the three like main gods on each side, I guess. Well, is that who? Is that Ra? Looks, is that Ra? I don't know. Kind of doesn't look like Ra to me, but anyways. Um, now it's time for me to open this bad boy up. See what we got. <laughs> uh, I'm also curious too. I, like I'm, I might play these two decks against each other. Uh, and I'm curious because I feel like the Sacred Beast came out like this year or maybe last year. And uh, if that's the case, then um, I'm curious if the Blue Eyes White Dragon deck can hold a candle to it. Like I think that maybe. Like, I, I feel like this deck's probably better, but I'm wondering how much better is it, you know? So we might have to test out that theory. So we have Ravio Lord of Phantasms, Shimmering Scraper. That guy just looks like a dude you do not want to mess with. Like, he looks so brutal, and he has the 4,000 attack and defense. Jeez. Cannot be normal summoned or set. Must be special summoned from your hand by tributing three monsters. Can only use each of the following effects... Uh, once per turn. Quick effect, you can discard this card and target one uh, from you, that you control for the rest of this turn. The attack becomes double its current attack and it can attack all monsters your opponent controls once each. Oh my god. Uh, if this card is in your graveyard, you can tribute one monster, add this card to your hand. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, no, that, that guy seems pretty brutal. Uh, we also have Yuria, Lord of Searing Flames. Uh, so yeah, these seem like like different. Like th these aren't like the th they look based off the Egyptian gods. Well, yeah, but they they have different names. So it can't okay, it can't be them. Uh, so this guy can only be special summoned by tributing three face up traps that you control. Uh, this card gains. It's interesting that they have to be face up traps. Um, that makes it a lot tougher, I assume. This card gains 1,000 attack for each continuous trap in your graveyard. Once per turn, you can target one set spell or trap your opponent controls. Destroy that target. Neither player can activate spell or trap cards in response to this effect's activation. Okay, very interesting card. Then we have Hammon, Lord of Striking Thunder. Uh, so again, you have to tribute three face-up continuous spells you control. Um, if this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, inflict 1,000 points of damage to your opponent. While this card is in face-up defense position, monsters your opponent controls cannot target monsters for attacks except this one. Ooh. It's like a provoking mechanic. Oh, okay. And then we, we actually have another Raviol so you can use his... I was wondering, because I was thinking, like, it seems like his effect, you, you probably need another one. That makes sense. Okay. So then we have uh, Armatil the Chaos Phantasm. Uh, oh, jeez, he's a fusion. Uh, so you need all three of them. Uh, must first be special summon from the extra deck by banishing the above three cards you control. Uh, you do not use polymerization. Cannot be destroyed by battle. Gains 10,000 attack during your turn only. What the heck? Man, if you get magic cylindered with this guy, you are, you are, you, you game over. <laughs> but Jeez, that has to, that has to be like the highest attack in the game, right? Like just like printed on a card. Um, man, that I mean, granted, you're not gonna be able to pull this off in the tournament uh, unless it's very casual, I assume. But that is that is sick. If you pull that out on someone, especially if they don't know what's in this deck, like if they're casual like me, and you pull that off, that's just crazy. Uh, Cerulean Skyfire to special summon Hammond Lord of the Striking Thunder, um, using its own procedure, you can also use face down spells you control. Uh, once per turn, while you control an attack position monster uh, with that name, you can negate any spell activated by your opponent or trap. Uh, change uh, that guy to defense position, face up. Okay, so I don't want to read everything in this, <laughs> this video will be, uh, it'll take forever. Uh, but we have Hyper Blaze, which I assume is a really cool card, Dimension Fusion, Destruction. Um, Chaos Core, 
Uh, that text is way too much for me at the moment, but we'll get to that um, off camera. Dark Beckoning Beast. Uh, again, a lot of text. Chaos Summoning Beast. Dark Summoning Beast. Phantom of Chaos. Let me put it back in the camera over here. Um, that guy looks interesting. Your opponent takes no battle damage from attacks involving this card. Once per turn, you can target one effect monster in your graveyard, banish that target, and if you do, until the end phase, this card's name and original attack become the monster's name and original attack, and replace this effect with that monster's original effects. Huh, that seems very interesting. Phantom Sky Blaster, Mad Reloader. If this card is destroyed by battle and sent in the graveyard, send two cards from your hand to the graveyard, and if you do, draw two cards. That's interesting. I could see this card sucking, though, if you have one card in your hand, and you really want to get some new cards, but you can't. Uh, Grave Squirmer, he looks cool. If this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, target one on, uh, card on the field and destroy that target. Ooh. That seems pretty good, but he's a 0-0. Zero, zero. But that that's a pretty good effect. Um, Rainbow Dark Dragon. That's pretty cool. Um, this card is always treated as an ultimate crystal card. Cannot be normal, summoned, or set. I don't know what ultimate crystal means, but hopefully it doesn't mean anything that I don't understand. <laughs> uh, must be special summoned from your hand uh, by banishing seven dark monsters with different names from your graveyard. You can banish all other dark monsters from your field and graveyard. Uh, this card gains 500 attack for each banish this way. Ooh, okay. That's interesting. Tragodia. Uh, interesting. Radian, the multi-dimensional kaiju. Uh, he seems pretty brutal. Chaos Hunter. Uh, when your opponent special summons a monster, except during the damage step, you can discard one card. Special summon this card from your hand. Your opponent cannot banish cards. Uh, that seems like a pretty decent card there. Uh, Puppet Master, when this card is tribute summoned, you can also, uh, you can pay 2,000 life points, then target two fiends, uh, in your graveyard. Special summon those targets, but they cannot attack this turn. Hmm. I don't think I want this card. I mean, like... Are all these gods fiends? Thunder, Pyro, Fiend. There's a lot of fiends in this deck, and I do think that there's probably good ways to use him. I don't know if I want it in this deck, though. Stygian Street Patrol. Um, Farfa Malabrech of the Burning Abyss. Uh, he looks pretty cool. The fabled, uh, Cer Cer it's like a little baby Cerberus. Uh, if this card is discarded to the graveyard, special summon it. That's interesting. Uh, Danger Chupacabra. So I heard about these, like, danger, uh, monsters. There's a cycle, and they're all, like, cryptids, which is cool. Uh, Opening of the Spirit Gates. Uh, Fallen Paradise. Phantasmal Martyrs. Um, Spell Chronicle. Terraforming. Um... Set Rotation, uh, Mound of the Bound Creator, One for One, again with a One for One. Send one monster from your hand to the deck, special summon one, uh, one level one monster from your hand to the deck. The Beginning of the End, this card is just basically black. <laughs> uh, if you have seven or more dark monsters in your graveyard, banish five monsters from your graveyard, draw three cards. Uh, this doesn't seem to synergize well with the Dark Rainbow Dragon, but, you know, we'll see. Pot of Desires, uh, that seems like a good card. Banish 10 cards from the top of your deck face down, draw 2 cards. You can only activate 1 Pot of Desires per turn. I wonder if this card's limited. This card's probably limited, but, I mean, I guess at a certain point, if you played multiples, you'd run out of cards, but... Uh, owner Seal, return control of all monsters on the field to their owners. I wonder how relevant that is. Field Barrier. Field spells on the field cannot be destroyed. Neither player can activate a new field spell. You can only control one field barrier. Swords of Concealing Light. I remember this card from back in the day. I don't remember it seeing much play, though. Maybe it's better now? Destroy this card during your second standby phase after activation. When this card resolves, change all monsters your opponent controls to face down defense position. Monsters your opponents control cannot change their battle positions. Interesting. Good old Mystical Space Typhoon. Love that card. Awakening of the Sacred Beast. I'm sure that card's amazing in this deck. Escape from the Dark Dimension. Target one of your banished dark monsters. Special summon that target. When this card leaves the field, destroy that target. And if you do, banish it. 
when the target is destroyed, destroy that card. So I have a question for those watching this, actually. So the Pot of Desires banishes your cards face down. Do you have access to using those cards? Like, can I use the Escape from the Dark Dimension to take a face down banished card? Um, like, can I look at them once they're face down? Or is it being face down... Uh, is that trying to say that I'm not supposed to look at it and that information is supposed to be hidden from me? Uh, I'm actually very curious how that works, so let me know in the comments below. There's Shape, si Shape Sister. Uh, that's a bit of a tongue twister. Uh, special summon this card as a normal monster. Um, that's still a trap, and you can only activate it once per turn. Uh, cool. Imperial Custom. Face up, continuous traps cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects except Imperial Custom. You can only control one imperial custom okay mistake neither player can add cards from their deck to their hand except by drawing them i feel like this is probably a really good card in the current meta uh, i mean there's probably cards that are so powerful right now that you you don't really you can't really run this but i feel like there's like decks like a lot of decks i feel like rely on these strategies and i feel like this would be a big counter to that um dark factory of more production uh, you can send one monster from your hand or field to the graveyard. Draw one card. You can also use this effect of Dark Factory. Oh, you can only use it once per turn. Okay. Um, yeah, that seems seems okay. Uh, Phantasm Emperor... Tr that guy. Uh, so, he's a fusion of three level 10 monsters. Um, yeah, he looks like a big boy. Uh, then we have the Phantasmal Martyr Token, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, then we have Phantasm Token. And then we have the Duel Links ads and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that's this deck. So I feel like this this deck has a lot more text, and I feel like that's probably what the current Yu-Gi-Oh meta is, is it more in line with these. Or maybe, maybe these cards just have more text than most cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't know. Um, I am pleased to see that most of the Spell and Trap cards... Um, seem fairly condensed, um, except for these fir first handful. Um, like this one's very simple. You add a field spell to your hand, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, like a lot of the a lot of these cards don't have too much text on them, which I think is a benefit to the game. Um, but yeah, like this this deck just seems like it would be a lot of fun to just uh, play casually, uh, especially when they don't expect for you to summon something like this guy, like. The, I, just the idea of the 10,000 damage or whatever is just so crazy. Is it this guy? Yeah, the 10,000 attack. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm going to put him on the front here. Um, but yeah, I know that he's he's probably not the best card in the deck. I assume that, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like the Pot of the Desires, like, I feel like that's probably limited to one. A lot of people play that. I feel like, I feel like this guy would have been really good back in the day. He's probably not played to he's probably not really played now though um but yeah i think these decks will be a lot of fun to play against each other uh let me know if you would like to see that happen if you'd like to see some gameplay of playing Yu-Gi-Oh or other board games and check out our twitch go ahead and follow us we have a link in the description below we also have an amazing discord community filled with gamers and anime fans so if that sounds like you we'd love to have you be sure to like comment subscribe it really helps us out so thank you so much as always stay awesome